When I built my first website, I originally picked Squarespace because I didn't want to deal with anything technical. I just wanted something clean without any effort and it delivered. But the more sites I built, the more I realized the difference is how each platform handles growth. Now, Squarespace works smoothly as long as you stay within the template. The moment you need something outside of it, you feel the limits. WordPress lets you build almost anything, but you manage more of the setup. And once your site gets bigger, that difference shows up fast. So today in this video, I'm going to walk you through what it's actually like to use both, where Squarespace stays smooth and where you start hitting the limits, and where WordPress becomes the better fit when your site needs more room to grow. And just so you know, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. I have used them for years, and when we get to the WordPress section, you'll see why hosting is such a big part of the experience and how it actually changes what WordPress can do for you. Now, the first time I opened up the Squarespace editor, I did really enjoy that you could just add a section. You drop in an image, rewrite a head Heading, and instantly the page looks like something you would actually show people. And what stands out is how fluid the whole experience does feel, like nothing jumps around. If you move an image slightly off center, it snaps right back. The entire editor makes sure that everything is aligned properly, even if you're not thinking about design at all. Now, it also never hands you a blank page either. It gives you structure. You work inside templates that already have good spacing and margins that are built in. Spacing is the breathing room between elements. Margins are the little invisible edges that keeps everything from bumping into each other. These are the things that make a website look balanced and Squarespace handles all of that for you. So instead of worrying about whether something feels off, you just focus on your content and the template keeps everything aligned. It really does feel like painting inside of the line too decide the colors, the words, the images, but the outline makes sure the page stays in order. Now, a lot of that smoothness comes from work Squarespace does without telling you. Hosting is already handled. That simply means that Squarespace is running the server that keeps your site online. Your site gets SSL automatically, which is a little lock icon next to your URL that tells visitors that, well, their connection is safe. Now, that's incredibly important in all cases, but especially if you're taking payments because people are giving their card info. There's also caching running in the background, which is just your site saving copies of pages so they load fast faster the next time. You never configure any of this. You only feel the results, which is that the site stays stable no matter how many changes you actually make. Over time, that consistency becomes valuable. I remember changing fonts across an entire site and kind of expecting something to shift out of place. And instead, the spacing adjusted itself perfectly. I remember checking the mobile version after adding a new section, ready to fix out some stretched images, and the layout had already organized itself. Even publishing feels predictable. You refresh the page, and everything just stays exactly where you left it. Squarespace handles the structure so you can actually focus on what you want to say. And for a long time, that was exactly what I needed, a place where one small adjustment would not break the layout. But eventually, you want more. Maybe you want a tighter product page. Maybe you want a layout the template does not support. Maybe you want to place a button where the system does not expect it. And that is when you feel the limits. The template keeps the design clean, but it also keeps everything uniform. It bends, but only so far. Now, in the beginning, those guardrails make Squarespace easy. Later on, though, they become the thing that you bump into. And that is usually when WordPress starts to make sense. Not because Squarespace is failing, but because your site has grown into something that needs room to stretch and grow. When you move into WordPress, the first thing you notice is that it comes in two versions. You got WordPress.com and WordPress.org. They look similar, but they behave very differently once you start building. WordPress.com is the hosted version. They run the server for you and handle the technical work, but they also limit what you can change. For example, you can't install every plugin unless you're on a higher tier plan. Plugins are small add-on tools that give your site new features, so those limits start to matter as your site grows. WordPress.org is the version almost everyone uses for a real business, a store, or just about anything long term. You get full control. You can install any plugin, change any theme, and customize every part of the site. The only catch is that WordPress.org does not host your site. You need a hosting company for that. Hosting is simply the online space where your site lives, the same way an app on your phone needs your device to run on. Technically, you can download WordPress and upload it to a server manually, but nobody really does that anymore. Every good host has a one-click installer. You press a button, name your site, and it appears on your domain in seconds. That's how I've installed WordPress for years. The host I use, Hostinger, has always made the setup as easy as that. Click, name, done. And their dashboard actually loads quickly, which sounds like a small detail, but when you are building a site, 
A slow dashboard makes even something as simple as checking your security settings a chore because it just won't load fast enough. And since I do use hosting on myself, I have a site starters coupon code linked below. If you do end up trying WordPress with hosting or that code gives you an additional 10% off on top of any current deals. It's a great way to save money and support the channel at the same time. Now, once you're inside WordPress, the shift from Squarespace is immediate. You're not inside a template anymore. You're inside something closer to a blank workshop. Everything is available, but nothing is pre-built. The editor isn't as pretty as Squarespace, but it never pushes back against you. If you want a full width banner, you can build it. If you want three columns nested inside of another layout, you can build that too. Nothing snaps back into place. WordPress gives you the ability to create exactly what you want. Even if your first attempt looks nothing like what you pictured. Then you open the plugin library. And this is where WordPress really sold me. You have things like reviews, galleries, pop-ups, memberships, bookings, custom product fields, SEO tools that help your products show up in search. Basically anything you've seen on another website. And instead of waiting for the platform to add a new feature, you just install a plugin and it appears in your dashboard. I remember adding, I think it was a review plugin to a store I was building and the entire product page felt more complete because it showed other people that I was credible and a reliable seller. Coming from Squarespace, it feels significantly different. You stop thinking in terms of what does the template allow? And you start realizing you could just add whatever the site actually needs. And this is where hosting becomes part of it. WordPress gives you freedom, but the host behind your site is what decides how smooth or frustrating that freedom feels. A fast server makes WordPress feel light and responsive. A slow one makes every click lag. And the more your site grows, the more hosting becomes the thing that sets the limits. Most people start on shared hosting, and honestly, that is exactly where they should start. Shared hosting just means your site shares a server with other websites, which keeps the price low and still gives you plenty of power for a brand new WordPress build. And that is where I began with Hostinger. The dashboard opened quickly, pages saved instantly, and for the first time, I could build layouts Squarespace would not let me build. Large product photos, longer descriptions, review plugins, custom sections. WordPress adapted to my ideas instead of pushing me back towards a template. Now, one thing that Hostinger does better than most entry-level hosts is simple. Their servers run on light speed, which is faster and more efficient for WordPress. It helps because it loads your site from a server closest to where the person accessing it is. So it just reaches them faster. It also includes built-in caching, which speeds up your site automatically. Even if you do not know what that is, you just feel everything load faster. As your site gets busier and you start adding more plugins, you eventually feel the moment when you need more power. The dashboard slows slightly, saves pause for a second, images uploads just kind of halfway. Nothing dramatic, but enough to tell that the site has outgrown the plan. And that's when you upgrade. And this is another place where hosting or stands out. Now, for a lot of hosts, upgrading means migrating to a new server and that hoping nothing breaks. Hosting or upgrades it in place. No downtime, no rebuilding, same site just more power underneath the hood. And if you ever reach the point where your site gets real traffic spikes, Hostinger has cloud hosting ready as well, which spreads your sites across multiple servers so it stays stable even when a lot of people visit at once. The important part is how you progress because WordPress grows in stages, right? And Hostinger is one of the few hosts where you can start small, scale up, and never have to move your site somewhere else. WordPress, it gives you the freedom. Hostinger gives you the power behind it. Now, once I had used both platforms long enough, the differences just became very clear on their own. Squarespace was perfect when I wanted something that behaved consistently and just stayed out of the way. It handled a lot of the behind the scenes, and that was exactly the pace that I wanted for a while. But the moment I wanted layouts that were more specific to the site, the template reminded me that I was still in charge. WordPress was exactly the opposite. It felt a little empty at first, but once I understood how everything worked together, it stopped holding me back. If I wanted to move something or build something that the default layout did not expect, there was always a way to make it happen. The only time WordPress ever slowed me down was when my hosting plan could not keep up. So in the end, choosing between them was never really a dramatic decision. It just came down to what the site needed at that moment. Squarespace made the early stages simple. WordPress gave me room to grow once the site became more serious. And that's everything for today. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe. And again, if you want to try WordPress with the same setup that I used, you can use the link below and input the code site starters. If you have any questions about your site or you're stuck choosing between platforms, leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Finally, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.